Hi, I've currently got a few projects that could really use an ESP32 in a DIN rail mountable enclosure like this. Uh, primarily with an RS485 interface so that we can interface with things like these Modbus energy meters, uh, perhaps my Solis inverter, uh, but also that can talk custom RS485 protocols to other devices that I've made myself. Now, there are things like these WaveShare Modbus gateways and you initiate a TCP connection with these via a remote device and then you can either just talk straight RS485 or uh, Modbus. So this kind of does what I want but not quite because the problem with this is you need another device to initiate all of the communications on the RS485 bus. So you can't just tell this, for example, to read this uh, energy meter once per second and publish the results to Home Assistant. It can't do that kind of thing. It only opens a connection that you can connect to remotely. So what I want to do today is to build up a PCB that has an ESP32 on here, has an RS485 bus, uh, can take a voltage range from probably like 5 to 24 volts or something like that, uh, and then maybe has a couple of other outputs as well for uh, stuff that I haven't defined yet, but maybe just to drive our RGB strips and that kind of stuff. So I found these modular enclosures. I think it's made by Camden Boss. I'll put a link in the description down below. But these are quite nice because they've got various modular options for your project. So it's got clips that can hold PCBs in various positions at the top or right down at the bottom. And then it's got these end pieces. So if you've got terminal blocks, you can punch out however many terminal blocks you're using and just expose those. So those slide in the bottom here. Uh, you also get another one for the other side, or if you've only got terminal blocks on one side, you've got a blanking plate here. You've got a plastic cover here, which you can drill holes in and stick labels to if you've got LEDs or anything like that that you want to stick at the front here. Uh, but if you wanted to put a PCB right behind here for indicators or displays, you can do that as well. So this should work quite well. And what we're going to do is get a PCB ordered at our sponsor for this video, PCB Way, get it assembled, and then just give it a quick test uh, to make sure it works. Here is the schematic in KiCad and it's fairly straightforward. I have copied the book converter schematic from the power supply board that we made the other day for the millimeter wave sensor. So this is almost a carbon copy. Um, it will allow an input voltage range from 5 volts all the way up to 36 volts. And just by adjusting the resistor network, the inductor could stay the same, I think it was. Uh, but we've adjusted that so that we get a regulated 3.3 volt output for the ESP32. That's all we need on this board. We've got the ESP32 here with just a few support components just to get it up and running. And I haven't bothered putting any of the programming electronics on the board. It's literally a straight interface to a pin header. So we will need to use an external programmer that has the appropriate drivers for the enable and the IO0 pin. Then there's a couple of uh, status indicator LEDs, so a couple there for the supply rails, and then an activity LED and two LEDs that I might be able to use as RX and TX LEDs on the RS485 interface. Then we have the RS485 interface just here. This is a 3.3 volt compatible RS485 transceiver. And then there's a couple of resistors here that just help keep the inputs within the specifications on the datasheet. I often see on projects on YouTube, people just connecting up the BNA pin, the inverting and non-inverting pins, and nothing else. And somehow it manages to work, but it's really not how it needs to be done. We do need that ground reference, and we do need to make sure that those pins don't exceed uh, the voltage specified on those pins. So that's the interface there. We've also got a 120 ohm termination resistor that can be provided by putting a little jumper across this terminal here. And then I thought just because we've got space on the board, we may as well add some open collector drivers. This might be to drive fans or maybe for driving an RGB LED strip. Um, so I've just added that on there just since we've got the capability and the space on the PCB. Here is the data sheet for the enclosure and the enclosure is a Camden Boss CNMB2-2 and it's actually quite a helpful data sheet. There's quite a few places that you can place PCBs in this enclosure. You can have one at the bottom here which is what we're going to be doing here but there's place for two vertical ones up in this position here, two vertical in the other direction and also some at the top of the enclosure if you want them for displays or anything like that on the front of the unit and then the following pages show how big your PCB should be so that they fit into the case which is quite nice. 
Here is the PCB design with the overall shape based on what was in the datasheet there for PCB A, but the ESP32 is going to sit here and therefore we have to have a little bit of a cutout around the antenna so that it works properly. Now I'm probably going to build a couple of different versions up, one with the version with the integrated PCB antenna, but then I might also build a few with a UFL connector and then have an external antenna so these can be used in metal boxes. But the general layout is that we've got the power supply input just here going into that DC to DC converter and that provides power for the ESP32. We've got the RS485 interface just here with a couple of indicator LEDs. The RS485 transceiver is actually over here but what I've put right next to the terminals is the TVS diodes for uh, ESD and over voltage and then we've got the open collector outputs this end with a couple of indicator LEDs which might be able to poke out the front of the unit. If they don't poke through the front of the casework I might end up building just another board that sits at the top um, so that we can have those LEDs right underneath the label. And then we've got the programming connector just here and then overall that should look like this which I think looks fairly neat and it also falls within our 100 by 100 millimeter size limit so we should be able to order these at fairly low cost from PCBWay. So if we go to the PCBWay website and click on PCB Instant Quote, we can then click on Quick Order PCB and then upload the Gerber files here. It's detected the size 86.5 by 33 millimeters. And then we can see we can get five of these for $5. Now I'm actually gonna get 10 ordered. So we'll click on 10 there. And I don't think any of the other options matter. We need a 1.6 millimeter PCB and green and hot air solder leveled is absolutely fine. So again, for 10, it's still only $5. And then we're looking at about $25 shipping if I choose DHL. So $30 overall for those PCBs. And so at this point, the PCBs have literally just arrived. These look really, really nice. Um, doesn't look like there's any manufacturing defects or anything like that or any mistakes. All the footprints look the correct size. I've probably gone a little bit too big on the size of the inductor here. I think I picked the wrong one, but I do have that part, so that should be fine. Uh, let's check it actually fits in the enclosure. So there's a couple of posts that it's supposed to sit on. So is it going to fit in there yet? Okay, so that pushes in, and that is a good solid fit. And as you can see, the terminal blocks will end up exactly in line with the opening here. So we'll have five... Uh, connections on this side and four on this one so that works quite nicely and looking through the top it looks like our three LED indicators will come through the front panel quite nicely but the ones that I've got for RX and TX they aren't quite in the right place so what I may end up doing is building another PCB that has the LEDs sitting all the way up here because possibly these are too far away anyway but I can build up all of these boards and just not populate the LEDs and I can work that out at a later time if I need to use them. I may not use them anyway. So let's get these boards assembled up and give them an electrical test.
And here is the assembled PCB, which I think it looks pretty good. I, for now, I've just soldered some SMD LEDs across the TX and RX footprints. Uh, I may not be able to use these anyway, uh, at least with ESP Home, because what I'm planning to do, first of all, just as a way of testing this, is flash the ESP32 with ESP Home, and then we can configure things like RGB LEDs for connection on the terminal block here. And there is a way to get Modbus working quite easily with ESP Home as well. So I think that's the least path of resistance to getting this board tested, and it may well do the job anyway. Now, in terms of testing, the power supply is permanently connected to the ESP32, so we just have to set some sensible limits on the input power um, so that we don't end up with any damage if there is something wrong. So given that this is capable of being driven at 5 volts and still give that regulator 3.3 volts, we'll provide 5 volts and just put a current limit of something like 50 milliamps and just check it powers up okay and then we can get the ESP32 flashed. Okay, and let's apply power. And that looks to be powered up okay. The 3.3 volt LED is quite bright, so let's quickly check the output voltage of the DC to DC converter. And so we've got a couple of capacitors just near the ESP32. And it's 3.304, so absolutely bang on the money. So that should be all working properly. So we can flash this with ESP Home, and then we can go into Home Assistant and write some YAML to actually get this working. So after flashing it with the ESP Home bootloader, it is detected and connected on the Wi-Fi network. And we click on Edit here, and here is a bit of code that I've written in YAML. Now, I'm not 100% proficient in YAML for ESP Home, so there's a little bit here that I'm not sure on. Uh, but what I've put here is an RGB light uh, configuration. So those three open collector outputs will be able to drive uh, just to test some RGB LED strip. Um, and those are using the LEDC component that's on the ESP32. So that is kind of a PWM generator. You can set the frequency and the pins that you want there. We've given them a name, output component one, two, and three, and that is configured to the red, green, and blue outputs for here. So in Home Assistant, what we should get is a color wheel that we can select the RGB value for. And then in terms of Modbus, we have set the TX and the RX pin, as well as the flow control pin. And for the energy meter that we're just going to test with, the board rate is 9,600 board. And then there's a couple of sensors here. So these are basically the values that it's going to try and read from that Modbus energy meter. So the AC voltage and the address for that is zero. Current is address zero one. Uh, then the total energy zero seven and the power zero three. And then you can put the conversion factor here in the filters section. So that should hopefully just work. The only thing I'm not sure about is the TX and the RX LED. I have configured them as GPIO, but I'm not sure if we can get them to blink when we're doing things with the TX and the RX pin. I'm going to have to look a little bit deeper to understand how those work. Now, the nice thing about ESP Home is you can flash the firmware over the air. So we click Save, and then we can click Install, and then we can just click wirelessly here, and it will connect to it, and then it just starts programming with the bootloader. So we'll leave it to do that, and then we should be able to test the output. And there, without too much trouble, we have got the system working. Now, I'm not sure why it's got some of these... Um, controls down here because these don't actually work. I think this might be from when I was playing around with my other ESP32 board uh, and it's left them on here. I might need to give it a unique name. But we've got the RGB output here so we can turn it on and off. We can set the brightness and we can also set the colour anywhere on here so we can pick red for example. And then further down the page we've got the readings from the energy meter, which surprisingly worked first time. It's reading the AC voltage. Now, I haven't got a load connected, so I can't read these ones. But if we have a look at what we've got on the bench, I've just connected this energy meter up to the mains and the RS-485 interface into the PCB, and you can see that's reading 245.8 uh, volts, which is what we were getting on the display. And then, as I said, I can change the brightness of the RGB LEDs. I can change the colour just using the colour wheel that was on the display. So yeah, I'm just picking different colours on here and it's coming out on the RGB LED strip. So that all seems to be working as I expected, uh, which is really good. That was very quick to get up and running. The only problem is 
Uh, with the limitations of ESP Home, I'm not sure if I'm able to get these RX and TX LEDs blinking with the RS-485 data. Uh, that's the only thing that I probably can't get working. But in terms of RGB control or maybe things like fan control for temperature control, that kind of stuff, I'll be able to connect those to these open collector outputs and drive them directly. So that all seems to be working properly. So my tasks now really are just to build up some more of these PCBs and get them assembled into this caseworks uh, and then get these all labelled up and then try and use them in my application. But if any of you do have any ideas how I can get these two LEDs blinking in ESP Home, uh, do let me know in the comments section down below. If I can't get it working, it's not the end of the world and I may end up flashing the ESP32 with some firmware that I've written uh, using ESP IDF. I might end up going that way, but ESP Home does seem to work quite nicely and it exposes the sensors very easily in Home Assistant, which does make it quite an attractive option. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to put the PCB and schematic files on the PCB Way website. I'll put a link to that in the description down below if you do want to build up one of these boards. Uh, don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some boards made. Uh, if you've got any other thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.